Hello, I'm Gary Stearman of Prophecy Watchers, and today's guest is going to talk about my favorite subject. And my favorite subject is the rapture of the church. And we have Pastor Billy Crone with us once again. Billy, it's good to have you back. Hey, Gary, it's always great to be on. Thanks for having me. Uh, our favorite subject. Yep. And uh, you have written uh, a book suitably called, entitled, The Rapture. <laughs> and, and underneath a little subtitle it says, Don't Be Deceived. Well, Correct. let's just take off and let's talk about The Rapture, my favorite subject. Oh, there's, there's lots to talk about. And it really should be exciting. Unfortunately, the reason why we have the tagline there, uh, Don't Be Deceived, it's uh, for a couple different reasons. One is people are being deceived because the, the rapture is the next big prophetic event on God's end time calendar. It's something that's called the blessed hope. It's something that we should long for His appearing. The other deception, I would say, is those that even believe in the rapture, Gary, um, there's different positions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's yeah. okay. The rapture, by and large, is what's called a secondary issue. It's not a salvific issue in that your position on the rapture doesn't determine your salvation. Unfortunately, today, uh, in the past, you could be able to, you know, okay, if you got basically four big positions. You got the pre trib position that the church leaves prior to the seven year tribulation, which is what we hold to and what we believe the scripture is clearly teaching. But then you have those that put the church in the seven year tribulation and they leave at the midway point or the mid trib. Then you have what's called the pre wrath position, uh, and that's basically three quarters of the way through, then you get raptured out. And then mm -hmm. of course post-trib that you're going through all the seven year tribulation they say, and then you get raptured up real quick and come right back down. So we wanted to put together a resource. Mm -hmm. uh, I hesitate a little bit to say this, but it basically is, Gary, a dictionary on the rapture. We start from mm -hmm. the very basis, the very core, where is it at in the Scripture, how do you base this, why yeah. does the Scripture talk about it, all the different positions, not just the pre-trib. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a, a huge resource on that. And we wanted to do that because it's like a, we should be able to discuss these things and, and, and yet not divide. And, and that it's causing great deception, people's misunderstanding of it, uh, how they handle it, the false accusations. Uh, and, and here's the other thing. Gary, it's being done in front of the lost. Hmm. And I, I'm sorry, that's a bad witness. Because if I was a lost person and I saw a, like a post-tribber and a pre-tribber going at it and, you know, what, what, what would I think as a lost person? You, I'm supposed to listen to you guys? You guys can't even get along. Yeah. Right? And we should be able to agreeably disagree on secondary issues. Uh, and, and so we put this resource together to hopefully corral that behavior back in. Uh, even if you don't want to come across and, 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 if you will, come over to the pre-trib position, which I think we make a very good <laughs> biblical argument for that, uh, could you stop saying that I'm, I'm not even saved and I'm, I'm going to hell? You know, we need to stop that. We need to come back together and deal with this. And hopefully uh, those that say that there is no such thing as rapture, you'll see that, no, the Scripture does teach that, and it's something to look forward to. Okay, let's begin now. Uh, with uh, the resurrection. Uh, you know, the, the thing about uh, our Lord, uh, He was resurrected. And, and those who follow Him will also be resurrected. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between the resurrection and the rapture? That is the resurrection of the born again. Uh, right. That's going to happen. Uh, and I really believe it. Uh, how do you put those two ideas together, the resurrection and the rapture? Yeah, well, let me, let me just quote you that. First uh, Thessalonians 4 tells us exactly. In fact, there's, there's two kinds going on there. Uh, two groups of people that are going to experience a resurrection at the rapture, and it's really cool. And of course, uh, First, First Thessalonians chapter four says, "Brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or who have died, mm -hmm. okay, or or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again; he was resurrected. So we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him or have died. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left." till the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, that's the Greek word harpazo, which means a quick snatching, catching away. The Latin translation from the original Greek there, harpazo is raptura, which is where we get the English word rapture. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, Paul says, encourage one another with these words. And part of that encouragement is he mentions there, he's writing this to the, the Thessalonica believers, the Christians there, and they were getting concerned, right? Jesus had ascended to the right hand of the Father after the resurrection, and the, the church was born, Acts chapter 2, so time has passed, and, 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 and the rapture hadn't happened yet, and, and, and some of their loved ones in Christ, Christians, ha, had, had died. And so they naturally begin to have some questions. What's going to happen to those people? Are, uh, are they going to experience this thing called the rapture? Will they be with us? Or, you know, what's going on? And so Paul addresses that, and he says that at the rapture, that uh, the people who have already died in Christ, okay, they first get their resurrected bodies. And then at that moment, those of us who are still alive at the rapture, we get our resurrected bodies. And together we meet the Lord in the air. So what, what's really cool is the rapture, I mean, there's two ways you're going to get to heaven. Well, there's only one way, it's through Jesus. But, but to get there after you get saved, right, what happens? You're either going to yeah. die... And 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We're there, right? Your last breath here is your first breath in heaven, and so shall it always be. It's going to be awesome. Or you're still alive, and you get to skip the death part, and that happens at the rapture. And our bodies in the twinkling of an eye are translated. We get resurrected bodies. But it says there, our loved ones in Christ, the Christians who've died before us, they get theirs first. We're hard on the heels, if you will, with them in that event. So think about that, Gary. And, and as a pastor, uh, I have uh, had the privilege of uh, not just doing weddings, but many funerals and many Christian funerals. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, you know, you're sad, you miss them, but it says we don't grieve as those who have no hope. We know that we're going to see them again. But listen, it's not just that we're going to see them again, Gary. The scripture says that the rapture, we're what? Our loved ones in Christ are going to experience the rapture with us. They get their bodies first, we get ours immediately after, and we're going with Christ. So that means, think about all the people you know who, as a Christian, there are Christians too that you've known who've died over the years. Gary, we get to see them not just in heaven, we get to see them at the rapture, and then, of course, heaven. Now, a lot of people forget that. Right. I, I just have to ask this. You may not be able to give a precise answer, but uh, you have the dead in Christ, and, mm -hmm. and then we who are alive and remain. And there's a little gap there between those two. Yeah. How far, how, how much of a gap do you think that there is? There? Well, I, you think that's just like almost so close that you can't tell them apart? I'm, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not asking you to be definitive, but I, I love to talk about these things. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I would think it would, it's not going to be too long. I mean, we know that at, at the rapture, you know, it's, the rapture, by the way, is not just mentioned here in this one passage. You also yeah. see 1 Corinthians 15 is another rapture passage in John 14 when Jesus said, that he's, you know, he's ascended. Where's he at? He's at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Yes. And he says he's going to prepare a place for us. But he says if he goes and prepares a place for us, which he is right now as we sit here, he says, I'm going to come back and get you to take you to be with me where I am in heaven. So that's another rapture passage. But in 1 Corinthians 15, it says that we're going to be changed. We will be changed. How fast? In the twinkling of an eye. And you know, I just happened to have my Bible open by, by some strange coincidence to 1 Corinthians 15, and, and Paul calls it a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. Right. And, and then he talks about this, in a moment the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, there's a, a point of discussion there, mm -hmm. uh, the last trump. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, oh, well, that's all the way at the end of the, of the uh, tribulation period. Yeah. So, and you've heard that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, different times. Yeah, and, and again, Gary, we deal with this. And this is, again, I hesitate to use dictionary because it doesn't read like a dictionary, but it's the whole gamut. I mean, for, we start from bare bones scratch. Is yeah. there even a rapture? Where does it come from? What's the basis for it? Is it even in the Bible? Then we get into the accusations against the pre-trib right. position, give a defense for that. But then we flip it around. And we start in reverse chronological order, and we get into the different positions. You got, we start with post-trib, then pre-wrath, then mid-trib. Okay, and typically, like in the mid trib, they'll say, "Well, that's that's when we go at the midway point of the seven year tribulation, uh, at at that uh, the final trump there." And one of the the classic mistakes that they make, uh, other than putting the church in the seven year tribulation, any of the positions, and the scripture is clear: Romans chapter five, First Thessalonians one, First Thessalonians five, which is before and after First Thessalonians four, the rapture passage. It says we are rescued from, we are not appointed from, and we are saved from God's wrath. So you can't put the church in the seven year tribulation because it's all of God's wrath. But these people say, no, 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 we're going in there for a halfway point, and then you hear that last trump, and uh, that's the seventh trumpet, and that's when we uh, get rise at, at, at the, the rapture at the middle. Uh, 
No, you're making a faulty assumption. We bring all this out, Gary. Just because you see the word trumpet doesn't mean it's referring to the rapture trumpet. In fact, if you do the research, there's about 62 different trumps or trumpets mentioned in the scripture. Mm. And they don't all have the same purpose. And that's common sense if you read the Bible and do some research. Uh, some of them are for announcing war or uh, calling of the people or worship services. It's used as a musical instrument. So it's an act of judgment. Yes, there is one also for the, uh, the uh, rapture. But there's also the trumps are used in the seven year tribulation uh, announcing God's next coming judgment. So it's a faulty assumption to say that just because you see the word Trump there that it's the same one as the rapture. Uh, that's not good biblical exegesis. And the problem with that, Gary, is uh, you make a, an assumption that it's the same. Let me give you a couple analogies. Let's say two guys uh, said, we went to the movies. Now, does that mean they saw the same movie? No, it just depend, depends on the context of what show they want to saw. Generic. Exactly. I, like one guy, he used this analogy. It's kind of funny. He says, but it's true. He says, okay, here's two pills, right? And they're both over-the-counter pills that you can get. You know, one's called Tylenol, one's called X-Lax, right? He says, so does that mean they're the same? No. One will, you know, make your headache disappear. The one, other will make your toilet paper disappear. But So you want to make sure you get the right definition. And so, Gary, in all seriousness, that's the fatal flaw. You see the word Trump, and you assume it's the rapture Trump. That's poor biblical exegesis. And it's not just poor, it's not true. The rapture trumpet is radically different than the trumpets that are mentioned in the judgments in the seven-year tribulation. And you're listening to Pastor Billy Crone, who has written a book, and that book is, as you've heard him say, a definitive uh, study on the rapture of the church. We're going to take a little break here because I want to tell you about our a monthly magazine. It's called The Prophecy Watcher, and uh, we publish it. And, and in The Prophecy Watcher are many, many articles on exactly what we're talking about today. We talk yep. about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. We have guest authors. And uh, just take a look at this, and we'll be right back. Each month, the Prophecy Watcher magazine arrives in thousands of mailboxes all around the world. Our newly expanded 48-page magazine features cutting-edge articles written by top prophecy experts, writing about things you may never hear about in church. Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, Ellie Marzulli, Todd Hampson, Jack Lingford, and many others. Examine the giants of Genesis 6, the future wars prophesied for Israel, the rapture of the church, prophecies about the Antichrist and the tribulation, the rebuilt Jewish temple, the book of Revelation, transhumanism, artificial intelligence, and so much more. You can subscribe to the digital version of the Prophecy Watcher for $20 a year. Subscribe to the print version for $30 a year or for a very limited time, we're offering a lifetime subscription to either the digital for $100 or the print magazine for $150. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. Just call the toll-free number on the screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. I certainly hope that you will take advantage of uh, that offer. And uh, by the way, th this is our current uh, Prophecy Watcher magazine. It has the Lamb on the cover. And the Lamb of God, yep. of course, is the center of everything that we think about, everything right. we do. Right. And certainly when it comes to the rapture, you know, the Scripture says it's not only our blessed hope, and that's why Paul says, encourage not once but twice, encourage one another with these words. Uh, that one day that Jesus Christ Himself, the Lamb of God, the one who saved us, the one who even uh, through His sacrifice and death on the cross not only saves us, but then that therefore qualifies us to experience uh, the rapture in and of itself. He's coming back, Gary, uh, personally Amen. to come get us the bride. And He's going to do it, I'm convinced scripturally, and we deal with this, prior to this event called the seven-year tribulation, which the Lamb of God, Jesus said, is the worst time in the history of mankind. Now, I really want to ask you something specific now because I've heard a lot of confusion about this. We talk about the seven year tribulation and we speak of the pre tribulation rapture of the church. Talk about the tribulation. What is it? Seven years? Why does it happen? How does it fit in? And then, having said that, 
how does the rapture fit in with the tribulation? Right. Because a lot of people may not understand how that seven-year tribulation uh, is laid out. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great question, Gary. And we deal with that in great detail because to me that's a common sense question. And we say, you know, what is this seven-year tribulation? Why is it seven years? Why is it not two years? Why is it right. five years? Why is it uh, not 192? Right. Why is it seven? Well, it actually doesn't start in Revelation. you got to go back to Daniel. Daniel is where you find out why we have a seven-year tribulation, who it's intended for, which is not the church, we'll see in a second, uh, and, and what's the whole purpose of it, and why is it seven years? It is the final week of Daniel's 70th week prophecy. Sixty-nine of those weeks have already come and passed at the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem at His first coming. But you have this gap that's going on right now called the church age until that final week takes place. The final week, seven, group of seven. Okay, that's why it's a seven-year tribulation. Now, when you look at when Daniel's writing about that event, the final week, the seven-year tribulation, uh, you understand, number one, who's he writing to? Right? Mm -hmm. First of all, he's writing to the Jewish people. Yes. When he's talking about that. Uh, it's a time of Jacob's trouble, not Peter's demise or Paul's. You know, the, the church isn't even around, right? He's writing to a Jewish people, uh, the Jewish audience, right? And he's talking about when God's going to culminate and finalize his promises he's made to the Jewish people. That after that final week, then here comes the Messiah, Jesus, and he's going to set up his rule and reign over the planet, okay, which is part of the Davidic promises, right? God's not done with the Jewish people, right? So he's writing to a Jewish people with a Jewish audience, and it's about fulfilling the promises to the Jewish people. My question is, why do people squeeze the church in there? And the why would you even have to? Because uh, if you properly understand Old Testament prophecy, he was looking way forward. Uh, Daniel, you mentioned. Right. Uh, and uh, God has made a promise to His people, the mm -hmm. 12 tribes of Israel, that He's, he's not going to drop them forever, that, right. that in the future they're going to be reinstated uh, right. in the kingdom. And it's amazing to me how uh, these two ideas, the church and Israel, are confabulated, mixed together. Mm -hmm. There's a separation there. And if you understand yeah. that separation, and, and I know that you do very, very well, right. uh, that's the key, I think, to understanding what we're talking about. Well, it is. And dare I say, there's another false teaching out there called replacement theology, where many people unfortunately teach that uh, the church has replaced Israel and God has done with them. That's not what the Scripture says. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to say God's a liar, which I don't highly recommend uh, because He's not. Okay, He is holy, He is holy. He doesn't lie like man. He's got promises clearly in the Scripture that are eternal promises, regardless of the Jewish people, again, where somebody from the lineage of David, Jesus, is going to rule and reign the planet. Obviously, that hasn't mm -hmm. happened yet. And that's just one easy example. So that's a future event. He's not done with them. And Paul reiterates that promise in, in the New Testament. He says the Jewish people are under what? A temporary blindness, not a permanent blindness or a permanent heart, a temporary, okay, until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, right? That and, couldn't be much clearer, until the fullness. What is the full, this fullness? Well, that's talking? when the last person gets saved in this church age, and only God knows that, then bang, the bride comes, or Jesus comes, gets his bride at the rapture, and then God's focus goes now back on the Jewish people, which go back to the book of Daniel. We just talked about that final week. That's the purpose of the seven-year tribulation. One of, there's two purposes there. The one, the Jewish people, God is going to use the seven-year tribulation as a tool to pull a remnant of the Jewish people uh, to Himself, okay, and then prepare them for the Millennial Kingdom, which is part of His promise. Yeah. Number two, if you read the context there, it also says the second purpose is God's going to pour out His wrath on the unbelieving Gentile nations. And, and you go back to that, where's the church? The church is not mentioned at all. In fact, the book of Daniel was written approximately 530 A.D., okay? Uh, and uh, where was the church when Daniel was writing this? The church, if you do the math, Acts chapter 2, they didn't come on until Acts chapter 2, the church was born. That's about 570 years later. So how could Daniel be referring to anything doing with the church? The church wasn't even in existence, Gary, for 570 years. Yeah. Right? Also, that's why in the New Testament, Paul, as you mentioned, one passage, but he does it in several passages, he calls the church a what? A mystery. And the rapture is a mystery. Why? Because Paul says even the Old Testament writers didn't, didn't know about the church. It was a mystery. So put all that together. How could the seven-year tribulation, that final week of Daniel 7 prophecy, have anything to do with the church when it's a Jewish audience, it's written to Jewish people uh, about fulfilling the Jewish promises, right? And, and God's going to 
poll, a remnant of the Jewish people, uh, and the word church not there mentioned at all. The church is not even in existence, and the church is a mystery that the Old Testament writers didn't even know. It's ridiculous. Uh, and, and, and again, don't be deceived. Read the scripture. The church is not going to have any part of that. And again, that's just one easy case, biblical case, that I think you can make as to why the church is not there. Hence the pre-trib position. That the church is gone prior to the seven year tribulation. Why? Because not only is that a time of God's wrath, and the scripture says for the church we are not appointed unto His wrath, we are rescued and saved from it. Number two, the original purpose and audience has nothing to do with the church. Therefore the church has to be gone pre-trib prior to the seven year tribulation. Not because I'm guilty of I just don't want to suffer pain and this is just easy believism and escapism. No, because the scripture teaches that. That's why we believe in that. And just to put the uh, cap on it, so to speak, Israel has to be reinstated. There will be a kingdom. Yes, exactly. And that has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be a distinct break between the age we're in now and the kingdom age. Right. You know all that. You've preached it. Uh, but some, somehow it's a difficult concept to, to really get home. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, uh, again, back to the replacement theology. The people, think about this, Gary. Replacement theology of the church has replaced Israel. This is what these people are doing with these other positions, whether they realize it or not. When you put the church in the mid trib, pre wrath, post trib, where's the focus? The focus is on the church. On the You're church. replacing the focus of the seven year tribulation yeah. with the church instead of Israel. That's a form of replacement theology. Wow. And you need to be careful about that. Let's take a break because I, I want to, uh, folks to get uh, this book. It's called The Rapture and a DVD set. By the way, uh, Billy's DVDs are packed with information and laid out for your understanding. And uh, let's just uh, show you for a moment here what they're all about. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. The rapture of the church is most certainly the next big event on God's prophetic calendar. It's the subject of more confusion and controversy than perhaps any other passage of scripture in the Bible. Billy Crone has produced a masterpiece on this subject, digging deeper into the scripture to examine the roots of the rapture and the tribulation to separate truth from fiction. If you're a believer in the pre-tribulation rapture, I'm sure you've heard the critics who take a handful of verses out of context to make a case that the church will enter all or part of the tribulation. Billy's research and careful handling of God's word will convince you otherwise, clearly separating God's plan for Israel and his plan for the church. The mystery of the church and the rapture was taught by Jesus, by John, and by the Apostle Paul. Billy's book on the rapture is available for your gift of $30 or more to Prophecy Watchers. He's also produced a DVD series that will make you an expert on the subject. His seven DVDs are available for your gift of $75 or more to Prophecy Watchers. As always, shipping is included anywhere in the USA. Both the book and DVD come with a special bonus, a copy of Billy's personal testimony, Get a Life, a shocking story of drugs, alcohol, a chilling pact with Satan, even an attempted suicide with some miraculous divine intervention. Just call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. When you order both the book and DVD in the Billy Crone Rapture Package, we'll send you Billy's personal testimony plus two special DVD bonuses, Gary Stearman's two excellent presentations on the rapture, The Rapture is a Resurrection, and Defending the Rapture with prophecy expert Dr. Thomas Ice. The book, the seven DVD set, and free bonus DVDs are available for your gift of $100 or more to help Prophecy Watchers spread the gospel and keep as many people as possible out of the tribulation period. What else can you take with you to heaven other than your family and friends? When Jesus left the earth 40 days after his resurrection, the Bible tells us that a cloud took him out of their sight. Will we be raptured one day soon, just like Jesus? The book of John tells us that Jesus left to prepare a place for us, but that he's coming again to take us home for all eternity. 
Will you help us take that message to a world searching for answers? The time is quickly running out. Help us tell the world that Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Well, I hope you will uh, avail yourself of uh, Billy's uh, book and DVDs because, and by the way, I've watched many of your DVDs over the years, and I'm always amazed at how much information you pack into yeah. a short space. You, I mean, it's amazing. It's just sort of like uh, as the old saying, you know, drinking out of a water bucket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of info yeah. there, and, yeah. and that's good. Yeah, well, you know, uh, certainly the Lord Gary and uh, or that preacher's disease, you just keep going on. I don't know. But no, seriously, well, there, we, there's so much. My advice, you keep preaching. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but, but, you know, real quick, Gary, I, I just there's so much and we're not going to be able to cover the whole thing. In I here. know. Uh, you know, again, we deal with all the positions, not just pre-trib. We flip it around and examine post-trib, pre-reth, mid-trib and, and lining up to the scripture. How does that right. line? Because that's that's supposed to be our plumb line right there. But we have a whole huge section, too, on the the accusations. Uh, against the pre-trib position. And we just go tit for tat. I gathered as many as I could possibly find. I'll give you two real quick ones. Okay. Uh, you know, for instance, people, believe it or not, would say, well, the uh, you shouldn't believe in the rapture because the word rapture is not in the Bible. Really? Let's, let's think about that. Now, I just explained the passage, 1 Thessalonians 4. Right. That's where we get it from is the Greek word harpazo. We see that doesn't say rapture. Uh, let, let's try to follow your logic there. Rapture comes from rapturo, which is the Latin translation Okay, of the New Testament Greek. Right. Uh, but it's from based on that New Testament Greek word harpazo. So what's your point? Plus follow your logic there. Did you know the word Bible doesn't is not appear in the Bible? So does that mean, according to your logic, I shouldn't believe in the Bible or you read it? Did you know the word <laughs> Trinity does not appear in the Bible? But the Bible teaches wow. it, right? So according to your logic, should I not did you know the word millennium? We talked about the millennium. That doesn't right. appear in the Bible. So does that mean I shouldn't believe in the millennium? No. Okay. And, and that's just one uh, example. The other one, I'm we, there's a lot of false accusations out there against the pre-trib. One of the most popular ones is over this issue of a lady named Margaret McDonald who was given this uh, uh, utterance. And they said, well, that's where it's a recent teaching. And, and that's where John Darby got it in 1830 from this, this uh, utterance from this girl and doing some weird demonic stuff. And, and that's why you should stay away from the pre-trib position. It's a, it, that's, excuse me, I couldn't wait to get to this one, Gary. Uh, and we went even on location uh, over there in Scotland to film it. And, uh, but you can get a copy of her utterance there. Gary, it doesn't even mention the pre-trib. We, we share the whole thing. You know what position it's actually promoting? No. Post-trib. All right. It puts the church in the seven-year tribulation. They're dealing with the Antichrist. That's not the pre-trib position. It's baseless. And Gary, we go on and on and on and, and show that it, uh, a lot of those accusations against the pre-trib, it's bankrupt. Don't be deceived. Hence the title. Do your homework and let's come to the right understanding of this. And once again, Billy Crone uh, packs more into 30 minutes than any human being on earth. Uh, you need to get the facts. You need to get the rapture. And by the way, there is a blessing that comes with uh, the acceptance of the idea of the rapture, right? Uh, Absolutely. What a blessing. Yeah, it's, it's called the blessed hope. It, it is. And thanks, Billy Crone. Uh, we're going to have to have Billy back really soon. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are.